Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 85, take five. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, ahoy to the 100 new subscribers since the last time we swabbed the poop deck. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit right down here on this bench and talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can follow us in all of our different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. That's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Can you tell we're in like rare mood today? Arrgh, me mateys. <laughs> I'm so glad that we actually got through it. Sort of, the beginning. Five takes later. If I change any little thing, I mess up. Well, I'm the same way. That's why we still have the same opening, even though like the whole opening needs to be redone. My shirt is encouraging me to be different, but every time I'm different. You're different, all right. I know, <laughs> but like every time I'm different, something goes wrong. <laughs> As a matter of fact, she's so different that I ran to the store today. You did. I come home, and you're going to see this because we're also vlogging today. So you're going to probably see the whole reaction next week. But I came home to find that she has decorated the entire backyard chicken coop for Halloween and Thanksgiving. Well, for Thanksgiving time, because I feel like just put on the harvest thing because it's already like so far into October that if I decorate the way I wanted it to be like a like a bloody hen house is what I was going to do. But <laughs> if I do that now, then we're just going to have to take it down. Quick. All I know is that the backyard chicken coop is decorated more than the inside of our house. Well, I was actually hoping if we hadn't had this whole situation where we're continuing to like not know what to do for the holidays because of you know covid yeah then i was actually going to make the trick-or-treaters actually go through a route through our backyard and be like in kind of a haunted hen house situation maybe with like zombie chickens no but yeah like we're not gonna even get trick-or-treaters no no we're not we're not doing it this year we found out most people in the neighborhood aren't gonna trick-or-treat this year and us as a family, we usually just kind of sit down in our driveway. And have some family time. And have family time. So everybody comes over. So we're still going to do that. But since we're not doing that, we're not sitting in our driveway this year. No. Which is actually good because we won't get eaten by mosquitoes, which is normally what happens. It's always Natty. We were talking about this on the live stream. It's the journey of Natty Gan. Yeah. So instead what that we're going to do, movie. we're going to go to Rachel's mom's house John and we're Pisa. hanging out just like a normal holiday. But we're going to be doing some like maybe minute to win it games right. or fam family games, like some, you know, easy around the poolside games. If you have any suggestions for easy games that we could play to help make it better that you're not having Halloween, but you're sort of having Halloween and you're like a sixth grader or a first grader, help us out. Okay. I, I just can't do this anymore. Share it. I have to ask. Okay. What's with the pirate hat? Well, this, Because she does this and doesn't tell me what she's doing. So the next time we do Keto on the Couch, it will be November. Actually, the next time we film Keto on the Couch, it's going to be on Halloween. We're going to have to somehow film, hot, film this around Halloween because the next day we're going camping. I know, but you know us. You you know me. I'm, I'm probably not going to want to like sacrifice any Halloween time. We're going to have to. But okay, it still doesn't explain the pirate hat. But the problem is, is that we're it's it's going it's growing shorter the amount of time where I can dress up and and it be okay. You mean because I'm gonna you're forty four years old? I'm gonna dress up anyway, but right now it's like acceptable. It is acceptable for me to wear the headbands that I'm wearing now. I'm wearing them all the time. I'm wearing them every day. It makes it hard for people that know me best. Like pastors, like, what day is it? It's not. Is it close? Is Halloween over? Because he doesn't even know. He sees right. me with a unicorn head, and he's like, "That could just be a regular Sunday." The outfits that Rachel has worn to church on a Sunday. Let's see. She dressed up as a robot. Medieval princess. A medieval princess. What What else have you dressed up as? I mean, everything. Runner. Oh athlete. my gosh! Yes. I mean, all kinds of things. Whatever. The very the theme first is. series we did. The when we race. took over in kids ministry in our church, 
It was called The Great Race. And yes, Rachel was dressed up in a runner's outfit. Oh, by the way, this is pre-keto. Yeah. So it was an interesting look. Yeah, everybody was like, you're not an athlete at all, is what I'm thinking. <laughs> but you know what? You know what I love about kids? They never said anything mean to me. Well, they never you, even looked at me sideways. They well, were completely awesome, and they were totally encouraging. Well, you know what I love about you? Kids are the best. I love you just the way you are. Even when you do decorate our backyard chicken coop for Halloween... And when you do wear silly pirate hats. Might as well embrace it and be okay with the fact that everybody is not going to get it. That's right. kind of like what we talked about in our Fearless Friday this past week. Mm -hmm. Everybody is not going to get it yes. when it comes to how you want to do Halloween, how you want to do Thanksgiving, how you want to do Christmas and, and Hanukkah. I mean, we're all, Halloween is the kickoff of the holiday season. That's right. And you can either have forward momentum in your keto journey, or this could be the three setback months. Right. And then you have to start all over again in January. Don't let it set you back. Don't that, let that's... it set you back. And especially don't let things set you back if it's people being judgy setting you back if you're like well I have to have some backpedaling because my family don't understand what I'm doing or my workplace they just don't get it at holiday parties if I maintain these health goals right now it's okay if they don't get it now I am curious what is everybody doing for Halloween let us know down up? in the comment section are you, you dressing up are you going to a party are you handing anything out are you going to just kind of like turn the lights off? I mean, what are your neighborhoods doing? Because everybody's neighborhood is different depending on where in the country we are. So I'm curious what everybody else is doing. I feel so sorry for party retailers because this is the perfect night for Halloween. It's on a Saturday. It's Saturday. How often do you get Saturday night Halloween? Either Friday night or Saturday night Halloween is the best Halloween there is. Actually, Saturday night Halloween is the best because right. you don't usually have to go to work first. For the majority of like families, they have the whole afternoon to get ready. I was so looking forward to Halloween and we were going to be in Salt Lake for Keto Salt Lake and we were dressed. Should we tell them what we were going to dress up as since we're not going? No, because Why? the costume is still on, friend. We're going to use it for our live stream. Ooh. Speaking of live streams, um, our live stream is on Thursdays. If you're new to our channel, we live stream every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Are you wanting to not live stream because you have to wear a costume? That's a great idea, but no. Actually, it, this actually just occurred to me. I don't even think I've told you. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, we, we can't live stream this Thursday. Well, we're live streaming another day. You're wearing that costume. We can't live stream Thursday and we can't live stream Friday. I have football games back to back. I have a game on Thursday Wednesday. and a game on Friday. So Wednesday night. Okay, so we're going to live stream on Wednesday, October 28th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll put a community post up as well that this week's live stream is going to be on Wednesday. I'm sorry, I actually seriously just realized that I have a game on Thursday. And I'm not getting out of this costume. I probably would have given it back except for like the football season is only four weeks long this year. So... Yeah. So the live stream is on and the costumes are on. We could live stream on Saturday instead no. of going anywhere. We could just no. live stream. Oh, we got to do it. And, and everybody else will want to get to their holiday parties. That's true. That's true. Okay. Enough about Halloween. Let's yes. talk about Keto Chuff Flavor of the Week. Your favorite. No. Yeah. Is it root beer? No. <laughs> it's chocolate toffee. It is my actual favorite. It is your actual favorite. Chocolate toffee. Toffee, keto chow, trick or treat. Rachel just off. Rachel just got the treat. So there's a link down below. That is the best flavor. That's Rachel's favorite flavor. Her favorite Hands flavor down. for ice cream. Her Pistachio is sometimes neck and neck. Like they they kind of like duke it out for like top ranking. Right. But chocolate toffee is so so good. Also, I wanted to mention because we're talking about deals that I ran to Costco and it, we actually saw it on the vlog. If you didn't see that vlog, I'm gonna leave a link for Rachel, over Rachel's head. And they had the um, moon cheeses, buy one, get one free. Yes. Well, I went on? and got more yesterday. It is still going on for like we three more days, I think till the 27th. Well, we have a bunch in the camper and we're mm -hmm. keeping them at home and they're like half price, come on. 
And also that Dunkin' Donuts coffee. They're really good with like just a little bit of like, you know, on the chartreuserie right. thing. Those are, they're awesome. Yeah, so I wanted to mention, if you, if you still, it's if you have a Costco bag. membership, run to Costco. If you're seeing this on Monday we'll or drive. Tuesday, it should still be on sale. You need a car. And that Dunkin' Donuts coffee was like really good because it's $4 off a container. Everything at Costco is huge and you're gonna need a vehicle to you're get You're like home. super distracted tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You're distracted because of that dinner we had. We went to Texas Roadhouse and used a $50 gift card that we got for Rachel's birthday and had 20 ounce prime ribs. Happy birthday. That was awesome. It was an unbirthday. It was awesome. I believe in celebrating those. It was interesting and I said it in the vlog that we're ordering and the girl's like, I'm like, I want the biggest one. So I get 69. She's like, I can cut a 20 ounce for you. I love a waiter or waitress that is in on the the experience with you, right? Yes. Like that they're like, let's do this. <laughs> let's just see how big we can make this. Like she was genuinely excited. Oh yes. And I love that. I also love letting the waiter or waitress know about the loaded broccoli option. Well, that was the thing is that she didn't, she so didn't know. we're trying to explain to her the broccoli. She's like, so you want, a, you want broccoli and a baked potato? I'm like, no, I want you to take the broccoli and make it like you were making a load. And we started explaining, she's like, oh my gosh, that sounds so good. What was funny was we're trying to explain to her how we want her to load up our broccoli and she thinks that we are trying to explain to her how to load a baked potato. Right. And it's like, do you think that this is my first day on earth? Like her face was genuinely like, I know how to make a baked potato. Right. <laughs> and we're like, no, 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 no. Put it on the broccoli. Right. She's like, oh, okay. But now my mind is blown. she was into the experience. So I looked at her, I'm like, so how much is the 20 ounce? And she was like, well, it's $4 more. $4 and is all. What happened though is before she told us about the 20 ounce, I was going to order a salad because I was sitting there going, you know, I really want a salad. And they actually do have a good salad there. And we've gotten it in the they past. They do, but not like meats. Well, we didn't know about the 20 ounce. So I was going to get the 16 ounce and a salad. And then when she told us about all that was going through my head was I had Christopher on one side, you know, slap a stick. Lettuce. And I had Hungry Heath on the other side. What are you doing? And I had Christopher going, why do you want any green stuff? And I had Heath over here saying to Let's me. Let's porky pig it. He was like, well, no. He was actually saying to me in my head, he was like, you have $4 left on earth. You can spend it on a bigger steak or you could spend it on a bunch of green stuff in a salad. Which one should you do? Both Christopher and Heath know So best. I chose the bigger steak. Just, and I think it was a good $4 spend. I think it was a, I, I can't imagine anything as like an upgrade or, or side option being better than that. Even if you're like a side of bacon, if you get an extra sausage, if you get- uh, Four more ounces of prime rib. Another egg. A dollar an ounce. Like a dollar an ounce. Like that's, think Ask about them, it. Like that's a bargain. Yeah, let's just order the rest of it. Like at that, right? <laughs> let's go to like a pulled place, you know, where you order the beef by the pound. But I'd like a dollar a pound option, please. That'd be awesome. I mean, I had, I had to look at it like the discount. Like, okay, so normally you pay $25 for a 16 ounce. So at that point you're paying what? Like a dollar 75 an ounce? So now I'm only paying a dollar an ounce, right? It's a dollar an ounce for the extra four ounces. Like that's a bargain. You have to go with the bargain. I could see Joe's mind moving. Like maybe if we order like six of these, I could really save money. I'm like, no, 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 we can eat two. The that's funny it. part is, is I am not a steak eater. Like not like Rachel, like I, I steak, steak, I can take or leave steak. Like I prefer ground beef. But I like there ribs, is something but prime rib, magical. I sucked that thing down. I mean, Rachel, of course beat me but i sucked that thing down there was nothing left on that plate i love that your i sucked it down is my you're running late <laughs> so anyway that's the flavor of the week for keto chow the moon cheese is still on sale the coffee is still on sale which is a great deal especially if you like dunkin donuts coffee and we did learn that camping world or gander is having some amazing shoes just sales. ours just ours? I believe that was just ours. Because it's like their grand opening five months later sale. $10 sneakers. Yeah, you got some, you'll have to watch that vlog. That'll, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Can't beat it. That'll be coming out next week. So hit the little bell button, get notified when our videos come out. We will have that vlog coming out next week. We also have Keto Camping Fear Factor episode five coming out this week. And this is one 
you will not want to miss this Ooh. one. You're not going to want to miss this one. I got to think back about shoes. I used to buy my shoes at thrift stores and had to stop because I've noticed that I think that sometimes they're stored in a hot place before they get to the thrift store. And a lot of times like the glue doesn't quite yeah. stick anymore. And I've had some bad buying shoes at a thrift store experience. I think we, we're all over the place. Let's take a quick I commercial break. And then get back into Keto College and comments and everything else. We'll rein it back in in two seconds. All of my ducks are in a row. Are you are you are you good now? My nonsense reined in. I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> Mostly reined in. Okay. Let's move on to Keto College. So if you're new to our channel, we like to look on our Facebook family group and find some inspirational posts. And we like to share them with you. Something that's inspiring us, maybe inspiring everybody else. Now, before I actually pull this one up, I did want to say, I know last week your mom was our adjunct professor of the week. Yes. But she is killing it. Like, she is in there. Like, I could have easily picked her again, but I don't want to show favoritism because, like, is she's mom. That's a nepotism thing. Yeah, no. But she is killing it. I love it. And one of the things that we talked about this week was what can her role be like as a grandmother, as a senior in the community, like, you know, even at church and stuff is, hey, I have more time to be an encourager because mm -hmm. I'm retired, because I'm home. You know what? I can wake up in the morning and put a post up early, bright and early and just say, good morning. I love you guys. You're doing great. You're going to have a great day. Like I'm relevant that way. And I think, man, being kind is always relevant. She is doing awesome. Like some of the posts, make sure you're in our Facebook family group. If you're not, I don't know why you're not. There's a link down below. It's completely free. It's full of people that are there to inspire you like Rachel's mom. It's full of people sharing recipes, sharing deals, just being there to be encouragers. And this week's adjunct professor of the week is actually Paul. Paul. And Paul actually wrote two non-scale wins uh, my endocrine doc called and said I have lower synthetic thyroid meds. Uh, he asked if I've lost weight and I told him I'm down to 185 pounds. His wow. reply was, you were at 248. Second story was at church on Sunday, the lady asked, are you off of your diet yet? And I diet. lowered my head and said, so she doesn't see me grin and shook my head and said, no, it's a lifestyle, not a diet. Good job. I will be off at my grave site. Aww. She looks at me, well, you look great. I might have to try it. She's been saying that for a month or two, so I hope she does. Also, my great second generation niece has joined the Below Two Club. Yay. Both her and her husband say they're feeling great, and I agree with Joe and Rachel, health first, weight concerns secondary. Wow, thank you, Paul. Yes, that is awesome. I love your attitude. That is really something that we can learn from you and something that we can maintain is you're gonna have people who come to you week after week, month after month, especially during the holidays, and maybe saying like, oh, I might try that someday, or you know, they might say something that is kind of almost like a backhanded. Right. Uh, you know, comments like they're they're bragging on you, but also like you should feel guilty for success. And you just handled that so well. Yeah. And I like I love that because, you know, keeping that good taste in their mouth for the way you interact with them will make them come back to you when they really truly are ready. Right. And I love just leaving that door open and the welcome that out. Yeah. I mean when you start getting nasty and saying things like, well, you keep saying that, but you're not gonna ever yeah. get it. Like, that's when they're never going to do it, right? But when you just keep moving on, letting people see your success and just inspiring people, sometimes people just turn around and be like, you know what? I think I want to be like that. Yeah, I like what's happening and I like the long time that you've maintained it. That yeah. make that lends credibility to it, right? The longer that right. you continue to maintain success, you know, everybody wants to take a look at it. In a second generation doing it now, I love that. Yep. Okay, so let's move on to our success stories. Okay. We have two different subscriber of the weeks. Uh, actually, the first one's not really a subscriber, okay. but is the wife of a subscriber. So we never that really counts. hear much from her, but I know that her husband uh, is Christopher, who Slapstick. is a Patreon. Thank and, you. And um, he is super inspiring to everybody. And he's just like, he is out there getting everybody to do keto, right? Check out his Slapstick friends keto. and his family members and his brother now. Of course, his brother sent us something that wasn't very tasty, but that's besides the point. 
We'll okay. see that this week. So Christopher put this up and he <gasps> said, I just thought I would share some of my wife's success. Ooh. And she actually put this on her, I guess her personal Facebook and said, I have recently hit another weight loss mark. I am at 40 pounds down. Wow. I decided to find the clothes in the picture from 2017 to see if there's any difference. What do you guys think? Any difference? Um, yes, hot mama. There is a giant difference. Like that is amazing. You look incredible. She looks awesome. Well done, uh, Christopher, picking the <laughs> wife. I like that. Man, she looks awesome. Okay, we have another one, and this one is Lori. Lori! She says, finally have the courage to post progress pictures. The picture on the left is a picture of my granddaughter and I taken a few years ago at my heaviest weight of all time, which was 330 pounds. I lost 60 pounds on paleo and working out at Planet Fitness three days a week for an hour each day for nine months. When we moved in 2017 and Planet Fitness was not as easy to get to, I stopped working out and I stopped paleo thinking that I could just cut back and eat whatever I wanted. I gained back up to 328 pounds and pretty much stayed there until I finally decided to try keto in November of 2019. I was in constant pain due to hydrodentist sapuvria or HS and fibromyalgia. I was taking 15 milligrams of morphine twice a day and I was constantly on antibiotics and steroids due to infections from the HS. I was in so much pain that I deliberately took an overdose of morphine in 2014 mm. in an attempt to end my life. Thankfully, I failed. Yes, thankfully. I started keto the day after Thanksgiving last year, and other than taking a week off for Christmas, which was a mistake, I've stuck to it and lost down to 240 pounds. Wow. And went from wearing a size 26 in jeans, now down to an 18, 20. I still have weight to lose, but the most important thing is that my HS and fibromyalgia have both been in complete remission since January. I have not had to take antibiotics for over a year and haven't had pain medication other than a Tylenol every so often since January. I'm able to walk without pain. I can raise both arms above my head without pain. I can tie my own shoes without help. Take the little victories where you can get them. The picture on the right is a picture of my mom and I taken this past Wednesday. My mother is 74 years old and has rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, and osteoporosis, and she started back on keto a little more than two months ago. She's already lost 40 pounds, and her mobility is really improving. I've got her hooked on keto chow. This is the only thing that has ever worked for me. Keto gave me a life. I'm going to live it up. Stop making excuses and start making progress. I'm not going to cry, Lori. I'm not. <laughs> I am proud of you for getting through that without crying. That was very hard, especially when she talked about like where she was at in 2014. I'm so thankful that you failed in that attempt because you have succeeded in taking your life back and living it to the utmost. And I'm so thankful that you also have blessed your mom, mm -hmm. which would be your total desire, right? It would be to influence the people that you love the most that, that you're surrounded by. And I'm so excited, girl, like this next chapter is gonna be even more victorious. And I'm super, super excited for your mom's good health as well. And just a question, what is her favorite keto chow flavor? <laughs> P.S. I'm interested. To, it can't be root beer because your mom seems way too cold to be like root beer. There beer is nothing favorite. wrong with root beer. A lot of people like root beer. Okay. So we, we are going to take another you. commercial break and get into our comments. But I did want to mention something because we are all about like our subscribers. We try to be like the channel that helps to inspire people, that helps to motivate people. That's what they're all that about. That is really there as support. That's what we consider ourselves. We consider ourselves support. A lot of the knowledge that we have when we give you guys recommendations, we talk about products, it's just stuff that we've experimented with on ourselves. We're not doctors. No. We're not nurses. Would you want We're not a pirate, lawyers. Would you want a pirate as a doctor? Most of what we know is either by studying, by talking to people like Dr. Barry, or just trial and error on ourselves. And everybody's body is different. We always recommend that for you guys. But we are all about our community and our subscribers. And we've talked about meetups and things like that. And I know that we're still got COVID stuff going on, but I wanted to mention Ready to people. something. Ready and that people. is we are going to sort of do our first meetup, right? We're going to open ourselves up to where we're going to be. Yeah. So in January, I'm going to put the dates here along the bottom. There is an RV super show. It's like one of the largest ones. It's in Tampa. Mm-hmm. 
and we have bought tickets for us to be there. And yes, because we do have a camping channel. I'll leave a link for that over here. That's a brand new channel. If you're not subscribed to it, do us a favor. Even if you don't care about camping, go subscribe to a shameless plug. Go subscribe. Help us get up to a thousand subscribers. I hate camping, but I'll subscribe. Yeah, we're just as funny and silly and Rachel's just as goofy or even more on that channel. So. As much as I don't know how to cook, I know even less about camping. <laughs> even less. So anyway... Since it's in Tampa, we're going to take our RV and we're going to camp in the parking lot of the RV show for four days. Doesn't that seem like a lot? That seems like a lot. So we're telling everybody, if you're in the Florida area, maybe even up like just north of Florida, Georgia, if you're planning on taking a trip, if you're an RVer, you can come down. If you're not an RVer, there's hotels. If you want to come hang out with us, I think it's $15 to get into the event. It was like $230 to camp there with electric and entrance fees for two people. Well, here's so I thought that was pretty cool. So we're going to be there. So here's if the you're going to be in the area, come hang out with us in January. We've got four days worth of catching up to do, guys. Like yeah. we need to catch up with you four days in person. Yeah. Like that's what we need. I'm going to need four days to have the conversation that we need to have, that I've been missing having during this season. So, whereas you may be thinking like, goodness, Rachel, like a meetup, let's just see each other for like maybe an hour is about all the Rachel I can do face to face. Four days, doesn't four days seem like way better amount of time than just an hour or two? Four days. Four days, so we'll be there for four days. Come four days with us. And then we are gonna plan some a couple of meetups next year, but we need some help. So if there's any of our subscribers that wants to help, like, organize some kind of a meetup like i would probably central say like florida? february something like that yeah. yeah like central florida something like that and then we'll probably try to do something somewhere else later on depending on how like everything starts opening back up because we're like interesting that. in having a meetup an m-e-a-t meetup yeah so we're thinking like in a Florida state park where we can do a whole bunch of barbecuing or something like that. And everybody can come. And if you want to camp, you can camp. If you want to get a hotel, just, just like a one day, day or maybe a two day thing. And just do like tons of barbecue meat while we all hang out. We'll get a couple of companies to sponsor us and stuff like that. Just cheap. Like just come meet cheap. Also, while we're talking about that, just a little heads up because I can't believe we're already talking about this. But it is the last week of October. We are going to do our, once again, our second annual 15 days, right? 15 days? No, it's 12 days. 12 days of Christmas. 12 babe. days of keto Christmas. Everything seems longer in 2020. It does, right? But it's still 12 days of Christmas. So come the holiday time, we are going to live stream every day for 12 straight days. Yep. We're going to get sponsors just like last year, to do giveaways each of those days. And are we doing a subscriber Christmas tree? We are doing a subscriber Christmas tree. The theme this year is victory. So okay. if there's a victory that you'd like to share, maybe it's even an ornament that you make for our tree for us to hang up on the tree yep. that just shows a picture of your before and after yep. or or something that you can do or something that is a victory that like now you can do. Like I love where, where Lori was saying, like I can tie my shoes without help because that really resonated with me right. because seriously, Joe used to tie my shoes. No, no joke and about it. And put them it. on. Yeah, seriously, put on my shoes and tie them because yeah, I would get winded or dizzy sometimes when I would bend over. So you want to get a little ornament that's a shoe to celebrate that victory? Like, I'm all about that. So any kind of ornament that represents a victory in general, victory in your life, personal accomplishments. It could be homemade before and after picture ornament. Maybe you started skateboarding since Something Edo. that maybe like symbolizes to you persistence and being persistent in your yeah. journey. Anything like that. Anything that, that kind of symbolizes any of those kind of things. So there's a mailing address down below and we're gonna do the same thing as last year. The only ornaments that are gonna go on our tree are ornaments from you guys. And then we will, one of the days during those live streams, actually decorate the tree live while we do a live stream, have a couple of giveaways and just kind of have fun like last year. Cause we really enjoyed it last year. I absolutely loved it. Probably one of my favorite Christmases ever. And I've had three tiny children, yeah. like where you're like, okay, it's all about the kids. Last Christmas was such... It was like a family event. It was such a fun Christmas. Like, yeah. I loved it. So look forward to that. And again, if you want to start sending in stuff, address is down below. Let's take one more quick commercial break and then we can get into this week's comments. Yay! You're back! <laughs> and so are we. Okay. 
first comment is from Debbie. Hey, Debbie. She said, thank you for the inspiration. I'm having trouble getting started with keto, but I keep pushing through. When you said it's not about perfection, something clicked. I don't have to do it all in a day. Thinking about getting healthier, in the past year, I've cut all of my sugar drinks, the sugar in my coffee and my tea, and all but the occasional fruit. I think that counts as a big win for me on my healing journey. Go me. Thanks again for putting things in perspective. Wow, I love that. Go you. Yes, every single day that we wake up, we need to look in that mirror and not see all of the things where we're like, we're, we could have room for improvement. Yes, every day until like Paul says, I'm in my grave. Right. There's room for improvement. But I love starting your day saying, go me. Yes. Because yeah, go you. Yeah, and it's a step-by-step -step process. Like we said last week and, and in previous episodes, when we started keto, we were doing tons of Quest bars. I mean, there weren't a whole lot of keto products out there, but you, we were definitely not doing like super, super clean keto. We were still eating canola oil and we were eating 59 cent eggs and you know lots of different foods like that. And it was a slow process. We slowly went from eating like sugar and wheat and stuff like that to eating healthier options. We slowly started getting rid of the not so good oils and then we moved into the pasture raised eggs and we were just talking about somebody with somebody on a comment on one of our videos from last week about like even meat. Do we eat grass fed meat? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. To me, that's the last thing that I worry about. I would much rather somebody eat like store bought meats that isn't grass fed, especially when you get into behind it but dump all the canola oils. But it's a step-by-step -step process and some people can take it super quick and some people have to take their time. Well, you know what? I don't think that we celebrate enough that we don't have sugar. It's almost like you've you've gotten past that step and you're on to all these other steps. Like That's you're talking the most about, important part. I didn't have sugar today. That's right. There was so many years, 40 plus years, where I could not say that. I could not make that statement. I didn't have sugar today. If you've been on keto for one day or you've been on keto for, for one year or 10 years, if you didn't have sugar today, can we stop for a second and be like, we didn't have sugar today. Right. That's amazing. Because it's the most addictive drug out there. We kicked it. That's right. awesome. Good job. Okay, next one is gonna be from Krista. Hey Krista, she says, thank you so much for today. Love all the inspirational support. I cried for joy with all the stories, but especially Yvonne, as I struggle to see any change in my keto journey. One month in and no weight loss, but I have heard so many people struggle as I do, and I know that unless I keep going, I will never get there. All my victories so far are non-scale victories, but victories nonetheless. No more pain in my joints, no more high blood pressure, and God willing, I can figure it out. Soon I will no longer need my asthma inhaler. Love to all my crazy keto family. That is so awesome, Krista. I mean, wow. we're proud of you. And it's just like we said last week, if you never lose a pound, and we're not saying you're not gonna lose weight, so don't take this the wrong way, but if you never lose a pound, but you've gotten rid of the arthritis and you've fixed all those other health issues, isn't it still worth it? Yeah. It's still worth it. And again, put your health first, the weight loss will come later. Get healthy and then the weight's just gonna fall off. It's gonna have no choice because you're eating healthy. And I love that you shared that Yvonne had an impact on you because Yvonne needs to hear that also. We right. all need to hear, we make a difference. Share your story because there's somebody that your story really resonates with and it may be the help that they need to keep going. And that's why we read these stories every week. So please go onto our Facebook family group and share your story. Whether you've been doing keto for a week, a month, a year, or five years, tell your story. If you're not at the end of your journey, that's okay. If you've had any success, like Krista, who looks at us and says, hey, I haven't had any weight loss, but look at all these other things, that is a success. Oh my gosh, it's and awesome. And we need to share that with people because you're going to inspire somebody. So the next one is from Alyssa. Hey Alyssa. Alyssa said, me and my husband have been talking about camping and are hoping to save up for an RV. I stay home with our three kids. Our oldest is in virtual kindergarten and we have a two year old and a five month old. Wow, you're a rock star. My sister-in-law lives in Indiana with her kids and they are my kids' only cousins. We figure since we can't afford vacation right now or for the foreseeable future, an RV is a great way for us to get into some much needed family time. Mm. Your camping talk makes us so excited 
for when we can start our family adventures. I love that, Alyssa. That gets me so excited. And I love that kind of plan for your future because I can remember when our plans were really negative plans and yeah. we didn't have a lot to look forward to. We were thinking, man, we're hurting and in pain and not doing great right now. What's it going to be like mm -hmm. in the future? And I love that your plans are so hopeful, right? Like this is so exciting. And I think that... You know, you're never going to be sorry that you invested in your family time right. because that really is super, super precious. Yeah, we actually just put a video up. I'm going to leave a link over Rachel's head on our camping channel. And it was five reasons why we think now is a good time to buy an RV and like why we bought it now instead of waiting. Because some people keep saying like, oh, you should wait. Well, one of them was you don't want to lose that family time because if you're going to wait a couple of years, your kids are going to be older. You're going to miss out on those opportunities. But another one was just like she was just mentioning is that once you get an RV and it doesn't have to be a $10,000 or a $20,000 no. RV, it could be a $2,000 pop up. Yep. It could be whatever you can find. But once you actually get it, vacationing is pretty cheap. I mean, the state parks, especially like here in Florida, a state park is $25 a night. Then you have county parks, you have national parks, you can stay for free in a lot of places. You can mooch dock in your sister's Somebody's driveway. driveway. Yeah, I mean, there we even joined a thing called Harvest Hosts where it was like 30 something dollars for the year, but there's all kinds of wineries and golf courses and there's farms. A, there's a llama you, farm. You can camp right there for free. All they ask is, you know what, while you're here, Buy come shop chain. or something. Buy a keychain, maybe. Buy from our farmer's market while you're staying here. So it, once you actually have the RV, it's very cheap to actually go on vacation. Before we move on, can I just say that you with those three little kids are just a complete amazing woman. Like you are an amazing woman and you're doing a Better great than job. You're doing a great job. Yeah, three kids that close together, God bless you. You're awesome. Okay, next one is from Keto Rising. Hey, Keto Rising. They say, my wife and I will be buying an RV as soon as we are able. We both want to live the RV life and travel all over the place. I love the two of you and how you bring that awesome inspirational energy. Well, thank you. <laughs> and thank you for, for you thinking about doing that for your family as well. Like, it's exciting. As a couple, it's a fun thing to do. And again, I mean, it's a great place and a great opportunity to eat the way that you want and not worry about anybody looking weird at you, yeah. right? Because you're camping. And you guys are thanking us for our being, but honestly, like, I mean, we've talked about it in the past and we did get into camping a long time ago. I mean, I always loved camping and we've talked about RVs, but it was always like a pipe dream. But honestly, you guys are the ones that inspired us to really take action on our dream because we were just sitting back. We would have never done it. And it was just like, we have to take action. It's time to get out there. It's time to enjoy ourselves, to get closer to each other, get closer to nature and take advantage of the fact that we've lost 100 pounds a piece. The fact that we could move is something that I'm really enjoying celebrating. Yeah. So next one is from mom to the third power. Hey mom, what a cool name. She said, when my kids and coworkers started asking me about the way I eat and how to start keto, I told them the first thing to do is take everything we've ever been taught about healthy eating and throw it out the window. Basically, proper human diet is the opposite of what we've been always told. This is how I throw. It's not good. You don't want me on your softball team. But I completely agree with you. It's best to start out and say, hey, before we you know, answer the question, what is keto and why am I doing it? Let me just tell you, everything you've heard before has been a lie. Because otherwise, you're just going to be interrupted every single time you make a point with right. the other person saying, yeah, but I heard this. Right. Well, I'm going to take it even a step further. So the first thing you're going to say is, listen, take everything you've ever learned about nutrition and what your doctors and what all the experts have told you and throw it out the window because it's we're doing the opposite. The next thing would be like, well, I don't know about that. You know, obviously they went to medical school, they know better. Follow it up with, well, how has it been working, right? Yeah, well, that's a good one. I yeah. mean, it's like people look at you like, you? well, this is the way to do it. Well, that's what I've been doing and it didn't work. And what is the definition of insanity? doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So, <laughs> I'm just showing you how I do basketball, air basketball. Oh, okay. So yeah, so if that has not been working for all these years, why are we gonna keep doing it? Let's try the complete opposite. And if it works, awesome. If it doesn't work, 
are we any worse off than we were before? It reminds me of the Seinfeld episode where Costanza says, you know, I'm gonna do the complete opposite of everything that I think to do and I'm gonna like have a successful day. And every time he makes a choice opposite to his gut feeling, he actually winds up making super success. It was awesome. Okay, next one is from Shell. Hey Shell. Shell says, hey, I'm a firm believer. I don't have the right to judge anyone's journey as long as you're not judging mine or hurting somebody to make yourself feel better. I've never cheated on keto. Normally I don't put that out there. I don't want someone to judge themselves by me. I started in March and I've lost 70 pounds. Wow. I also stopped smoking in December, cold turkey. Wow. But I'm one of those people who once you've made up your mind, that's it. I was 311 pounds and a smoker and I told people all the time I wasn't ready and didn't want to diet or stop smoking because if I'm not in 100%, it's a waste of my time. That is so stinking true. I'm exactly like that. Like if I've made up my mind, nobody can stop me. But if I am in that wavering mode mm -hmm. and it's just like, it's I'm, I'm just in the hypothetical mode, right. like maybe it would, I'm in wishing mode. Like maybe if I wish upon a star, I would like to have better health, then I'm not ready and I can't do it. So right. like there's no sense in getting angry with me about not going forward with my plans because they weren't a plan at that point. They right. were just a wish. You'll know when I make a plan because it's happening. Right. Ask Joe, it's happening. <laughs> the first time that Rachel actually lost weight, I was like, what are you doing? And she's like, that's it. I mean, and just wouldn't even get out of the bathtub, right? Like no. five straight days, wasn't getting out of the bathtub. She's like, if, I'm getting out to go to the bathroom and then I'm getting right back in the bathtub. I know that sounds nutty, but let's explain some context for that is, I knew if I got out of the bathtub, then Right. I would head to the kitchen and begin eating it everything worked. in the refrigerator. So I literally had to stay languishing in the bathtub. And I know that that sounds like ridiculous, but you do I, what you have to do. I had to disconnect. Mm -hmm. I had to disconnect. And I'm right. so proud of you. Like that is amazing. Like cold turkey, non-smoking. Oh my goodness. It's That's amazing. awesome. Okay, next one is from our Facebook group. It's from Kayla. Hey, Kayla. Kayla said, I was really craving wings, so I pan seared some chicken breasts and topped with Frank's buffalo sauce. Yes. I'm not really keto, more dirty, lazy keto, and I've lost six pounds in three weeks. That's amazing success. I'm gonna say, there's nothing wrong with what you ate there. I mean, I'm, you're calling it lazy or dirty keto, but that's chicken breast with Frank's buffalo sauce. There's nothing wrong with that. I put that sauce on everything. I mean, Frank's buffalo, the worst thing about Frank's buffalo sauce is it's got some canola oil in it and we have that once in a while. We alter it. What do we use? We use the, not the hot sauce, right? If you really, really want to have it clean, instead of Frank's buffalo sauce, you're going to use Frank's red hot and melt butter and you're going to get the same thing, only it doesn't have the canola oil, but there is nothing wrong with that. Chicken is perfectly fine on keto and so is hot sauce. And that mixture is really more like what gives you the restaurant wings taste. Yes. That's their hidden secret is they're mixing hot sauce with butter. Well, so. even if you go to Buffalo Wild Wings, like Buffalo Wild Wings, the best one to get is the mild because it's gonna have the least amount of carbs and the least amount of canola oil and they, the hot sauce adds you know like carbs to it. Mm -hmm. But that's what almost every wing restaurant does. They take Frank's hot sauce and then they mix it with butter. They don't use the buffalo sauce. They cut it down with butter. And so the hotter you want them, the less butter they put in there. Next one is from Keto Ray. Hey Keto Ray. He said, good morning. Just wondering if anyone has a trick to getting rid of this excess skin on the midsection due to the weight loss. Definitely can't afford the surgery. Thank you in advance. Uh, it's gonna be time. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, just it is. Time and uh, intermittent fasting will help. Maybe some, you know, other fasting in there. The autophagy will definitely help. But it's going to take some time for the elasticity to come back and to kind of get rid of it. In the meantime, you can just wear tighter clothes and kind of like push things into where you want to hide them and things like that. So first of all, give yourself the grace time at least as much time as we gave ourselves to fill the spaces. Right. If we could, I mean, cause I'm very impatient myself. Like I want to hurry up, like I lost the weight, I want to hurry up, but I was 40 years heavy. So that was a lot of time right. that I gave to that project. Now this is a new project and it's just going to take time for your skin to, to get fixed. What you can do to help is, as we've said before, wear some construct, constricting things to kind of compress the skin as it heals. Because I want to call it healing, right? right? That's what it well, is. Well, that's it. Your, your body's healing. But um, 
what your natural like go-to might be is to keep things tight in areas where you really don't have a problem. Like I have no problem wearing something tight around my waist area because that is like the 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 thinnest part of me. Mm -hmm. I have trouble spots in my thighs, in my hips, on my arms, and usually I don't want to wear, you know, tight fitting pants or or tight fitting shirts but that's what I need. That's what I need to do is, is put like tighter things in those areas because that's where the skin is. Those are the problem areas. So fight the urge to only wear things tight in the areas where you really don't have a problem because right. that's my issue. Right. Okay, we have one more and it's gonna be from Danielle. Hey Danielle, she says, hey guys, I've been back on keto for almost a year now. I would say my views pretty much mirror yours in a way that I eat good and mostly meets with the occasional keto snacks. My issue is that I always hear how being keto gives great energy, but for me, not so much. I have a very sedentary job and find myself needing several pick-me-ups throughout the day. I'm thinking it must be normal, but wanted your feedback. My go-to pick-me-ups are Super Coffee, Zevia Energy, and stuff like that. Actually, I find I feel the best with zip fizz, but I don't drink that very often. Okay, so if you're lacking energy, it's one of two things. Either A, you're not eating enough. Which sounds uh, crazy. Which sounds crazy, but your body needs energy, especially when you're on keto. You know, your body needs energy. You need some fuel. And sometimes when you cut your calories too low, your body's gonna slow down, and then you're gonna become lethargic, and you're gonna be tired, and you're not gonna have that energy. So it's kind of weird. The way our body works is it knows what to do when you give it absolutely no food and it knows what to do when you give it enough food. It doesn't know what to do with teasing. When you give it in that middle, it's like, eh, what do I do? It's what like, it's a, it's, it's like when I give Tabitha three grains of her dog food, right? Yes. She wants two cups or a cup and a half of it. And then I go to feed the cats and I drop three and I look at her and go, there's your dinner for the night. And she would not like that. She's gonna look up at me and be like, are you joking me? Like one of those, like my tooth is bigger than that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what happens is when we cut our calories too low and our body doesn't know what to do with it. The other thing, and I have a feeling this is really where it may be lying, is your electrolytes. Yeah. You need a lot of electrolytes and if you don't have enough electrolytes, you're going to feel really lethargic and you're not gonna have enough energy. You need like 4,000 milligrams a day of potassium. You need like 5,000 milligrams a day of sodium and three to 400 of your magnesium. And that's just your starting point between taking things like Zip Fizz and than your food and stuff. That's why we use the Keto Chow Daily Minerals that you know Dr. Barry helped uh, make. Just, it's a good baseline and then get from your food and then if you need to add more. But if Zip Fizz is making you feel good, well, it's loaded with vitamin B yeah. and it's got a thousand milligrams of potassium. Whereas the Super Coffee and the Zevia is relying on like the caffeine side right. of a pick-me-up versus like the vitamin mineral side of yeah. a pick-me-up. Yeah, so I would definitely, Take a look at your electrolytes. Maybe get yourself some Keto Child Daily Minerals. Get some of the electrolyte drops. You know, if you don't want to do the Zip Fizz every day, which I know a lot of people don't. I, we don't do them every day. It is two to three carbs. It's a thousand milligrams of potassium, but like so is one serving of the Keto Child Mineral Drops. Doesn't taste great, but it's going to give you everything you want for less money than the Zip Fizz and you don't have to worry about any of the carbs or anything. And practice, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. Even if you're in a sedentary job, job like take a walk, come yep. back, it will actually energize you to just kind of like get that blood flowing and yep. moving around as, as, as weird as it sounds. And if you're like, well, I have to kind of stay in my, my cubicle or my work area, then yeah, I mean, Tara's talked a lot about how she put like a little floor mat in there that's like a gel thing so her so she could stand on and just like basically stand up and type at her desk. Even if you can move your desk higher and lower, it'll help you move and yeah. that'll help you get energized too. I'll give you another one that I've even noticed. Like if you ever watch Dr. Barry do his live stream, sometimes you're gonna see like behind the scenes shots that Nisha is doing and he works at a standing up desk. He looks like the Captain Morgan guy. Well, he's always exercising like his legs and stuff. So you'll see him standing up and I started doing this like even sitting at my desk where he's got pumping his calf up and down or maybe just kind of bouncing his leg. He's exercising his muscles while he's sitting. Now you can't tell when you're watching his live stream because it's all happening yeah. below the desk. 
but you could do the same thing. If you're sitting down, like just while you're sitting down, maybe like do like little leg kicks back and forth, just kicking your leg. Like right now, I'm just kicking my leg back I'm and forth. I'm tap dancing. Or, you know, as you maybe as you're typing, just kind of like, you know, pump your arm like this if you don't have to type or just do different exercises while you're sitting down. That'll just kind of get you moving a little bit. It'll work the muscles. Just don't do the same one over and over again. Like maybe do one leg and then the other leg. You'll Otherwise, make a Popeye arm. You'll end up like me and have one leg twice the size of the other leg. So <laughs> Not by design. Well, that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. Make sure you leave some comments and some questions down below for next week's Keto on the Couch. Now, if you do like seeing videos like this, there are actually 84 more Keto on the Couches full of our nonsense. All nonsense, And mostly. you can find them by clicking on the link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you're gonna find right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel, click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we make a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. bye.